So I want to do a real quick overview of how to use the moonscapes, um, just for reference and uh, as you can start playing around with your own sort of versions. And before we dive into Blender, let me just look at the texture themselves. So each set or each sort of landscape comes with five textures. So the first is a diffuse texture. The second is an EXR texture, um, which is the displacement. Unfortunately, my, uh, my preview here won't show it. That's okay. Um, Basically, the reason it's an EXR, it's a 32-bit full float EXR, which means it's got lots and lots of detail, and um, both the free and the paid version. So um, that's going to be used for displacement. Then we have a, a mask texture, which really is just sort of an extra for you to, to play around with. If you want to do something else with these, then create a, a moon surface necessarily, if you want to do some other kind of shading. And um, it's not necessarily for the, like, the final shader of the moon, Similar with the normals, you might be tempted to use these along with the displacement, but that's actually not necessary either. Um, these are really, again, included as an extra, um, so you can use these at a distance because the displacement actually has all the detail already in it, so you don't necessarily need an extra little bit of, um, of normals and stuff in there. And finally, there's a roughness map as well, which has been derived from the diffuse map. And you could use it, but it doesn't make that much of a difference. And you'll see why in just a second if we switch back, back over to Blender here. So just to set this up, uh, very similarly to the way I set this up in the um, in the promo video, so I've got a plane, I'm going to scale it up about 50 times. So now I know I have a plane of 100 meters by 100 meters. Um, obviously, the, the textures aren't necessarily to scale. Some of them have like a bigger area. Some of them have a smaller area. It's really up to you to use them in the way that you want to use them. And um, yeah, again, you have a little bit of artistic control. And this is really just to set up the shader and to show you some of the stuff that you can do with it. So I'm going to divide this 99 times. So that way I know I have squares of one meter by one meter. Again, this isn't necessarily to scale. It's just to keep things a bit easier uh, on yourself when you're working with this stuff. So let's actually start with a displace modifier and uh, let's throw in a new texture here and set the mid level to zero. So we're only pushing upwards. So um, we don't have anything going under under zero in the world there. And let's go to that texture and let's open up our textures and let's grab that second one that we looked at. So let's grab that displacement. So you'll see this is about one gigabyte for the displacement texture in the 16K version. I think it's about half for the uh, for the 8K version. Now, the only thing we still need to set is just to set this to UV. And now Blender is going to use the default UVs of the plane to push this up. So let's set this to maybe 15, something like that. And um, this is just one way to use it. There's another way to use it, which I'll show you in just a second. And now we can just add in as much detail as we want. If you actually want a mesh preview in your um, in your viewport, and really that's about it. Uh, if you just want the shape and you want to mess around with it a little bit. Now, if you want to get into shading it properly, I'm actually going to turn these two guys off, and I'm going to add a new subdivision surface modifier. Remember, these are both turned off. Um, I'm going to set this to adaptive subdivision. If you don't have this option be sure to set your feature set to experimental uh, in the cycles render engine. This is not available in Eevee. Um, and it's just so we can uh, we can do some micro displacement on this. And um, I'm going to make sure I set this to simple as well, because we don't need any smoothing of the corners. We just need to subdivide it as much as we as we want. So I'm going to add in a uh, new shader here. And before I do anything, I'm just going to add a sunlight to this. And I'll uh, talk about my reasoning for this in just a second. I'm just going to move this up and maybe make this strength about seven and a half. And again, I did the promo for this, so I know these values work, but it's up to you to play around with these and, and see what extra you get. The only reason I'm putting this in right now is so we have something to look at when I switch to rendered mode. And one of the things we want to do is instead of using the principled BSDF, you could if you wanted to. Um, if we go back to the textures, you might notice there's no specular map. And the reason for that is that the moon itself uh, doesn't have a lot of specularity because it's a lot of coarse dust. So the idea is that you either set the specular to zero if you're using a principled BSDF, or in our case, um, we're just going to use a diffuse BSDF because we don't need all that extra stuff. We only need the, the roughness to sort of um, simulate the coarseness of the of the landscape and the color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an image texture and duplicate this. And for this second one, I'm actually going to grab the displacement texture that's already loaded in. 
And for this first one, I'm just going to grab the diffuse texture. And we'll see in just a sec, this already does quite a bit. So first of all, we're going to load this in and we get the colors. And then in the options of the shader under settings, we want to make sure we set our displacement to displacement only. And now when we plug our displacement map into the displacement slot, we're actually going to get that displacement working properly. So uh, let's give it a second to calculate here. And you can see I had set this to, I think, 10 or 15 before. Again, we're going to set the mid-level to zero. So we're only pushing out and maybe set the scale to 15 and see how that goes. So this seems to be maybe a little bit extreme. So let's try it to be like 12 and a half. And again, it's up to you to use this any way you want. And the reason this is all blown out is because we're going to give our sun a little bit of an angle. And um, you might be tempted to throw a sky in there, but in the case of the moon, because the moon doesn't actually have any atmosphere, there's no light, um, sort of no indirect lighting, except for the harsh sunlight that might bounce around. So you can see just by tilting this at an angle, you can get these really crazy, uh, cool looking moonscapes. And really the displacement just does everything else for you. Um, one of the other things you could do is make sure you set the roughness up a little bit higher. So if I set this up to like 0.4, what this is going to do is it's going to sort of make this, um, make this yeah, surface a little bit more rough. So it feels more like sort of coarse sand or grains or something like that uh, at a distance. Or you could go in, uh, let's duplicate this diffuse map. And for the promo, I actually set them up this way. I didn't actually use the roughness map, um, but I included it just in case uh, you prefer something like that. It's going to grab the roughness here, pipe that into roughness, and it's going to give us a somewhat similar result. There we go. A little bit more variation. And now we're almost ready to render this. Uh, but we want to keep a few things in mind. So especially if you're rendering on your GPU, you want to make sure that um, you have your subdivision set somewhat properly. And one of the things we're noticing already is, well, we just need that little bit more around the edge here. So maybe what we want to do is we're just going to hit Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. And we're going to pipe this vector into all three. That way we're controlling the, uh, the UV coordinates for all three of them. And if we just click and drag down and set the scale to two, now you can see these are actually perfectly tileable, which means uh, we can go closer into one and actually have a little bit more, a uh, little bit more to work with for our render. Or you can maybe tile them one and a half times, and that way you've just got your crater here. You could maybe zoom in on it and just have a little bit more, and you can see the seamlessly tiles. And if you look at the PDF that's included with the pack, you'll uh, be able to see which ones tile seamlessly, almost all of them do. There's only a few exceptions, uh, which will be obvious why once you start playing around with the textures. Maybe tile it just a little bit less because I don't necessarily need the edges of those other craters. I just want a little bit more so I can zoom in here and maybe make a shot. There we go. And let's add our camera and set that to our camera view. And rather than moving the plane around, I want to move the camera around and just maybe have the crater sort of in the middle there. And I'm just moving it around a little bit. Let's give it a second here to catch up. There we go. And that's our camera setup. So one of the last things um, I wanted to talk about, which I alluded to earlier, is in the subdivision tab. Um, you want to definitely use your Dyson camera. That way, anything that's outside the camera view will be optimized when it comes to displacement. But also, um, depending on how much GPU memory you have, you might want to bring the max subdivisions down. So because we already have a subdivided plane, which was um, you know, quite, what is it, 40,000 faces because we had 100 by 100 here on each side. Um, I want to make sure that it can all fit on the GPU. And the reason I initially subdivided this was so the uh, we could use the displace modifier. But in this case, um, depending on how much video memory you have, if you have, you know, six or eight gigs, you might want to keep this around three, maybe four subdivisions. If you have more, you can bump this up to maybe five or six um, in my case, I'm working with an, an RTX 3090, so I've got plenty of VRAM, and I know um, six subdivisions on top of those 100 sort of subdivisions of the original plane will work. Um, so let's see, I have quite a large thing set. Yes, so maybe set this to 75% real quick. 
And I'm just going to hit render, and you'll see it now tessellating the plane. And we'll give it a second to, uh, to compute everything. And there you have it, it's starting to render. And as you can see, the resolution really is uh, quite amazing. We can do one more thing if we want to add a little bit more detail in. Um, and it's a quick little trick, uh, which is also described in the documentation. But let's say uh, we'll select our plane again. One of the things you could do is use your diffuse map as a bump map. So if we go into the vector menu, or sorry, vector, and hit bump, then we can put the color into the height slot. And because this is a, a black and white map, um, everything should work pretty good. Put the normal in the normal. And rather than having this sort of over the top, maybe bring the strength down to... 0.25 or something like that. Again, it's up to you and the shot that you're using. But you can see without it, you can see sort of over here and over here, there's quite a bit of detail, but just adding that in, you can just push it over the top. Um, and if we want to do something a bit more artistic, uh, we could add whatever we wanted into here as well. So again, it's up to you. Let me render this at full resolution so you can kind of see it full screen. And actually, I'm not going to save this file. That's fine. And Let's just let this tessellate and render. Now, again, um, the amount of subdivision will also be resolution dependent. So it's up to you to, to fiddle with the settings and the subdivision settings of the cycle settings and make sure that you have something that's somewhat optimized for your machine. Or you could always switch over to CPU rendering if you have you know 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM. Then you might be able to push it a little bit further by using the CPU. So let's just let this complete real quick. And that's basically it. Uh, the only thing I really did different for the promo is a little bit of post-production, but um, I'm not necessarily going to get into this, but you can see how quickly you can set up a really detailed, beautiful looking moonscape for, you know, any project you might need it for. And the cool thing is, um, you know, if you want the crater to be a bit more, a bit more shallow, then you can always bring the scale down a little bit. I might have to adjust our uh, camera and, um, Again, it's up to you to use this artistically in any way you want. So let's move our camera over a little bit, bring it in here. And now we have a crater that's a little bit more shallow, for example. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, I would say that's about it. So if you've downloaded the pack and uh, you've been having fun with it, definitely share the results. I'm, happy, I'm very eager to see what people do with this. And um, yeah, have fun <laughs> and make some really cool sci-fi renders.